Bad news, everyone. Pablo Torre, injured to start the season. Not great news. Not bad news, though. Because he's not even our player. He's on loan from Bayern. Yes, season four starts today. Shall we get into this? Yes, folks, hello and welcome back. And do not scratch your eyes. This numeric value here at the bottom, £46 million in the bank balance. You're not seeing things. That's real. It's very, very real. Okay, so yeah, uh, where do we begin? I, there's one place we have to begin today. Last episode, I left things and I thought that the transfer window was winding down. Bayern Munich had different ideas. Bayern Munich came to me and offered me £40 million and 50% of any future sale profit for Pablo Torre. And we've got him on loan until the end of next year. So we still have him for two year seasons. Uh, yeah, perhaps with that just explanation, you can understand why I took them up on that offer. He is gone. He is still here. As I mentioned, though, he is injured. So he won't be playing in his La Liga debut today against Sociedad. And well, unsurprisingly, with that huge sale, the finances suddenly look really, really rosy. £46 million in the bank. Now, bit of an awkward moment here, really. I've sold Torre and then I've loaned him back. So I've not really lost anyone. So I've been given £40 million to reinvest, but we were so close to wrapping up the transfer window. I didn't want to sign a load more players because we've already got a big squad. My squad was kind of already sorted, but we have gone in and dipped our toes a little bit in the market. You might notice some new names here. Uh, you know what? Let's just go here and talk about them, shall we? So, players that have joined us. Well, Pablo Torre joined us on loan. Uh, as you can see, that happened at the end of July. Happened about three weeks ago, this sale. So it's been a bit of a mad dash to sort things out. But we have brought some players in. Uh, the first of which is Antonio Blanco. Talked about this guy last episode. He had extortionate wage demands. In the end, we've managed to pick him up for £14,000 a week, which, whilst not a small sum of money, at 23 years old, 17 determination, 16 leadership, superb box-to-box -box midfielder, I think he could be a long-term option here at the club, a really influential figure, the kind of player who could probably go on to be our captain, dare I say. I say that knowing full well. I've already given him the captain's armband. Unfortunately... He is injured today. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a down note. He and uh, Torre both out injured for this game against Sociedad. Uh, as you can see, pre-season, mixed bag. We don't care about pre-season, Jack. Who else have you spent money on? Okay, okay. Onana, what's his name? I'll tell you, it's, it's Amadou Nanana. That is his name. Uh, he's 22 years old. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I left things last time out thinking, oh, Rojas is a good centre-back, but maybe I could do better. And whilst Onana probably isn't, your obvious centre-back, I think for us, he could be really, really good. And well, if we just compare him to Rojas here, you can see not a great deal of difference between their aerial ability and their defensive ability. He's quicker, he's more physical, he's a way, way more complete player. And in games like today, he will move up into the midfield, but I do see Onana as a centre-back option for us. A big transfer comes in and comfortably becomes our biggest earner on £25,000 a week. For £7 million, though, I think we have got a little bargain. We've then got Coffee uh, Kuaku, or Ku Kuau, I don't know, and Coffee. Let's just go Kofi. Let's go with Kofi. We had a Kofi last year with Luzanak, didn't we? Uh, this guy is just a squad player. He can play naturally left back. He can play naturally right back. He's one of those players that I like to have in my team somewhere. Um... Yeah, that, I mean, he's not that incredible. He's just okay, really. There is one further transfer here, and I did go to Argentina. And even if I didn't get the players that I wanted, maybe I've got someone who's a little bit better. Here we have Alessio Avramides. Can I just say, that is the most fantastic name ever, Alessio Avramides. And, uh, well, he's not a bad player either. He was actually listed as Est Estudiantes' key player. Um, for £6.5 million, though, we've got a player who scored... Eight goal, uh, 18 goals sorry, in 26 games. Got seven player of the matches. An average rating of 7.53 in Argentina. Oh, did I forget to mention? He's 18 and his birthday's not till April. So we don't have to worry about sorting him out a birthday present for the best part of eight months. He's absolutely top draw. I mean, you can see how good he is here. And uh, he is going to be the player that we play out on that right-hand side. A position we were looking to find a player for. I think we found a very capable player of doing that for us here. 
And well, when everyone is fit, this is the team that I will play, hopefully, I, I, I want to believe. Pablo Torre, of course, still here at the club. Beecher on the left, Mijica down the middle. Rojas is at centre-back, at least for now. I think with him and Thomas Basia, it's going to be a case of letting them do battle for that second centre-back spot alongside Onana. Of course, with today's game, a little bit of shuffling needed. So actually, Onana's going to move into the box-to-box -box midfielder role, which I think he can do pretty well, especially with 17 pace. And uh, you know what? Just really kind of well rounded attributes and then Bastia he is actually going to get the nod today maybe a chance to prove himself uh, elsewhere we've got Huardo I think that's how I meant to say it out at the right hand side on the left we've got Marsa uh, who of course is on loan from Barcelona and well the man to replace Pablo Torre today you might have thought it was going to be Ricky Pooch which is apparently how this name is said it's not going to be Ricky Pooch uh, instead it is going to be Morgan Gibbs White. Yes, I'm giving the Englishman the nod. Now, you might think I'm just being biased, but if we do just quickly compare him to Pablo Torre, you could argue that he's slightly better than Pablo Torre. Um, I think it's undeniable he is better than Ricky Pooch uh, on the whole. Um, you know what? Ricky actually is a really, really good playmaker. They will share time. Um, you know, playing the centre attack in mid position. Uh, it's actually a lot closer than I thought it was. But I do think Gibbs White is the man for the job here. Obviously, a big day for Avramides. Um, and the team on the whole is looking a little bit different to last season, dare I say. So just to recap the players that we've not already mentioned, uh, obviously Rojas is going to play at centre-back alongside Machado, two members of the defence of last year, surviving what was... A pretty intense transfer window. Of course, Fernandez is going to play the ball winner midfielder role for us. 22 years old. Room to grow. I really hope he's going to thrive and become a top quality player this year. And hopefully not get sent off in the big games like last time. And well, up top, we've got Bicho and we've got Mejica. I think if there was one position I'm maybe slightly worried about, it might be the striking area. We've got Mejica, who was a goal scorer last year. The question now becomes... Can he be a goal scorer in La Liga? If he starts to, you know, dry up, we've obviously got Willem Gabels who can come into the team, the Frenchman, to play as a striker for us. And well, if they are not working, Alessio is more than capable of slotting in as an advance forward and doing a job for us. But for today, we're going to start him out on the right and see what he can do. And well, as has already been mentioned, today's opposition is Real Sociedad. We are away from home for this game. If we just look at the season preview, they actually have us finishing 17th which is outside the relegation zone. I mean, I respect them for backing us. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. Our opposition today in Sociedad predicted to finish fifth, which I don't love. That could be a little bit difficult, couldn't it, really, when you realise that they're that heavily favourites. Ah... But anyway, no messing around today. This is the team we're going to go in with. So I'm looking at the lineup now. We have five players from last season. So it is a big turnover in players with YouTube series and with football managers as a whole. I don't like to drastically have this big turnover of players. But for a season like this, a season where we are leaping forward you know, into a stronger division with an unexpected promotion, it's kind of inevitable. We've got to strengthen in certain areas. To start the year, I want to try and play our brand of the 4-2-3-1. I have got a plan B formation in place that if things don't go you know, perfectly to plan. Ultimately, the board expectation this year is try and avoid the drop. If we were to go down, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I feel like the, the Pablo Torre money was great. And had it come earlier in the window, I would have approached this a very different way. But given the fact I kind of already had this new squad with so many new players... I wasn't in a position to just go out and spend all this newfound wealth we had. So we've been a bit selective. I do hope that Anana is going to slot in and be a real bit of quality for us. And of course, there's some pretty good players on the whole just across this team. And uh, hopefully we're, we're going to have a competitive season this year as well. We are called into defensive action inside 15 minutes. The first time we need to defend this season, a Machado tips the free kick over the crossbar. We love to see it. Okay, another corner for them here. Douglas whips it in. Rojas gets it away. He is on a book in the left centre-back, so he has got to be careful as... Well, we're going to look to try and deal with things here, although Douglas has got in behind and whips it to the pat post and unintentionally hits the crossbar. That's not what I want to see at this moment. Very, very excited to see Avramides. I think he is the first player we've signed as a regen who I've looked at and gone, you, you are going to be big. I'm hoping he's going to be big out on the right-hand side. Lots of expectation on his shoulders at 18 years old, but... Oh, an early goal could settle his nerves. Why not do it against the team predicted to finish fifth away from home? We've actually had 57% of the ball here. We are holding on to the ball quite nicely. You may have noticed we are sticking with the shape we played last year. I've just noticed Beecho's on a booking. Uh, not on a booking. He's injured. 
So is poor two for them as he skews that one horribly right wide. Of course, Beecho has a bit of an issue with injuries. You know what? I don't even think it's worth risking at this moment. What we'll do is we'll bring Gibbs White to play on the wing. I don't love that because he is right-footed, but he's not right-only-footedness. He has a bit of a left foot. It kind of exists on the end of his leg. And then we'll bring in Pooch to play as the advanced playmaker. Of course, another player we've got on loan for a couple of years. I'm thinking with Rojas now going to Bayern, maybe we look to try and sign Ricky permanently. Um, if, of course, he shines over the next couple of years of his loan spell. I feel like we've got all these players on nice long-term loans. I've got to be wary of the fact they could be recalled if I don't treat them well. And while at the break, you can see here, we started the half really well. We actually had a few chances. Uh, however, as the game went on, they definitely got into it more. End of the first half, we've not had a shot on target, but 54% of the ball is not too shabby at all. That said, I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy. And well, hopefully in the second half here, we're going to come out... Ready for a battle, ready to do something more and maybe do some defending as well as they have the ball here. It's going to be with Hamed out in the wide areas. He's going to whip it into Lacazette of all men. And of course they've got Alexander Lacazette in the middle. Why wouldn't they have Alexander Lacazette in the middle? He must be in his early 30s here. I mean, he scored for them. We're down to 17th. We're not in the relegation zone though, so it's absolutely fine. Bit disappointing this one though. The defence not caught overly deep. Uh, in the end, I think it was Basia keeping him on side. It's always a big risk when we have a lot of turnover. You've got to remember that in the back four, there are three new players. Uh, there is going to be a bit of a gelling period, a getting to know each other period that we're going to have to overcome. And well, for the first time all game, we're seeing a highlight of us on the attack as well. Jose Massa, the left back, whips into Onana, who hits the crossbar with his header. That was an effort, not bad, by the box-to-box -box midfielder to get into the area there. Unfortunately, just over the bar. Right, an hour gone. I think it's time for some changes. Uh, Mejica on a 6.2 is absolutely awful. Avramides has not looked good out on the right either. So you know what? Jonathan Martinez, you ended last season very, very well. You are 17 years old. You are right-only footedness. But that didn't bother you last year. Let's see how he fares with the step up, shall we? One regen off for another. And while we're on that right-hand side right away, where is Martinez? There he is, fresh off the bench, back to Onana. What's his name? He gives it to Huardo. He's going to cut inside, lays it to Gibbs White, and his shot goes just wide of the post. A great opportunity potentially squandered there. But you know what? With 25 minutes left of this game, we are, we're, we're giving them a good game. We're giving them a battle. You know, we go into this game, massive underdogs, away from home. I'm sure the players are up for the occasion, and it would be disappointing if we can't do a little more here. Let's go on to attacking and just get a little more direct. But ultimately... We're not disgraced ourselves in our first game of the season. You know, it's so difficult when you go into a new league like this, especially in a situation I've not really faced before. I'm not sure where we're going to match up with other teams. I've strengthened the team as best as I can, and I am happy with the players we've brought in versus on what we had previously. Except Basia. I've decided I don't like Basia. Unrelated to the penalty that he may have just given away as we go to VAR. But no, I feel like the squad this year has taken a step forward. It's just a case of... Is it enough? And well, the preseason predictions obviously have us finishing fourth from bottom. So the media at the least rate my transfer business. I mean, we'll find out if I've made the right or wrong decisions as we go. Uh, the ref there has made a decision. I don't think it was the right one. A penalty to them. A chance to double their lead. Basia giving away the foul. Machado, can you make a stop? He can make a stop. Can he get up for it? Of course he can. I never doubted him. It's a new year. It's a new Machado, everyone. F f what, three minutes left? Can we do anything? No. No, no, we can't. But 1-0 it finishes. In a bizarre way. I feel like we were pretty unlucky there. They had one shot in the second half, and it was that penalty that was missed. We played some really good football. I say that. They actually had... The, okay, the sh that shot there was just in the, the second half by five minutes. But they had two shots in the half. The point still stands. We kept them very, very quiet. I'm going to tell the players we're unlucky. We, we gave them a battle. We did our best. It wasn't good enough. And maybe I should be unhappy because of that. But you tried your, you didn't try to lose. And we're not in the relegation zone. So there, let's look at the positives. And beat only one to two days. We're fine, everyone. We are fine. Now, in terms of when we're going to be back next time, I have Real Madrid and Barcelona back to back. And to be frank, we're probably going to get killed in both of them. But... Because I don't want to miss the first time that we beat either of these teams. Tomorrow, we'll come back for both of them. What could go wrong?
Well, I mean, this could be a terrible idea. We've got a horrible start to the season as well. Some of the big boys to start things off. Okay, so you know what's in store for us next time? I don't think we're going to sign anyone else, but don't take my word for it. There's still a week and a bit left of the window. Hopefully we will have a win by the time we're kicking off next episode. And of course, it's a couple of big ones. Real Madrid, Barcelona. That's what we talk about when we talk about promotion to La Liga. Looking forward to taking them on. Either way, gang, that is going to wrap up absolutely everything from me. You may have noticed in the bottom right, I have a player joining us. He joins in January. Fabian Velez. Tomorrow I'll reveal more. He's a centre-back. He's brilliant. And, uh, well, on that cliffhanger, on that hook, I'll see you guys again next time. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. He's good. He's Velez. He's very good. Should we have a look? Sure. Ah, ah, cut to black. Cut to black editing, Jack. <laughs>